This rare 1935 footage shows military maneuvers in Buchberg, Germany, filmed directly after Hitler's proclamation of the restoration of military sovereignty and the integration of the Reichswehr into the new Wehrmacht. As this footage was taken, the process of transferring the body of Paul von Hindenburg to the Tannenberg Memorial in East Prussia was underway. The association of these two events is closer than they might seem. This multi-part series will cover how the Nazi propagandists managed to weave the mythos of German militarism together with their plans for future expansion, specifically domination in the East. Here in part one, I'll use primary historical sources to show how the image of Hindenburg and Tannenberg were manipulated and expanded for their purpose. Stick around, it's worth it, I promise. This is a complete collection of the periodical Die Wehrmacht for 1939, with an original collecting binder. If you're interested in possibly buying the collection, there's a link in the description. On the cover of issue 17, which was published in mid-August of 1939, there's a photograph of the Tannenberg Memorial. Notice the Wehrmacht Honor Guard positioned at the entrance opposite the statues of the permanent Honor Guard, a bridge between past and the present. Below the photograph, a large rally celebrating the military is announced, which will be held at the memorial on August 27th, just five days before the start of the war. The official line was that on September 1st, Polish soldiers had attacked the Germans, but this was an invented pretext. None of this was coincidence. Everything had been timed carefully to prepare the soldiers and population. After the campaign, Goebbels' propaganda ministry even produced this ridiculous film. As long as the German army was successful and the population was being told what they wanted to hear, it didn't really matter how believable the information was. Later in the war, producing effective propaganda was much more difficult. This late 1939 film's name would eventually be changed to simply The Campaign in Poland or Der Feldzug in Poland. There's a link to the original film in the description. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you have exclusive access to see the film on military1945.com. Go there and open a free account to see some example footage. If you're not yet a supporter, please consider becoming one. Back to 1935, we see the ceremony for the internment of Hindenburg's body into the war memorial. Hindenburg had been the field marshal who, in 1914, was given credit for defeating the Russian armies that had advanced into East Prussia. This association made him an important figure with the stab in the back theory, supported by right-wing nationalists, which believed that it was not the German armies that had lost the war, but rather the liberal elements of the home front. In 1919, he had stated, the concern as to whether the homeland would remain resolute until the war was won, from this moment on, never left us. We often raised a warning voice to the Reich government. At this time, the secret intentional mutilation of the fleet and the army began. This was very much in line with the program of the NSDAP. However, the Nazis believed that those supposed backstabbing liberals were Jews. Although not openly anti-Semitic, for the sake of national regeneration, Hindenburg was willing to turn a blind eye, believing that the World War I corporal with a silly mustache could be controlled. To many conservatives, the fact that Hindenburg had been willing to do business with Hitler, making him chancellor in 1933, gave him and his movement an air of respectability, which opened the way 
for both politicians and industrialists to begin cooperating with him. Without Hindenburg's support, the Nazis most likely wouldn't have come to power. He also was instrumental in tacitly approving of the dissolution of democracy and the death of the Weimar Republic. This postcard shows Hitler greeting Hindenburg on March 21, 1933 in Potsdam, the day the Reichstag was reopened after it had been burned. This rare footage is from the same day. Hindenburg had not wanted to be interned in the Tannenberg Memorial, but rather wished to be buried at his estate Gutneudeck. But that didn't fit in with Germany's newly revitalized militarism, and Hitler was the new man in charge. This is a situational map from June 21st of 1941, the day before the campaign against the Soviet Union began. It's from the original campaign atlas produced by the German High Command. Zooming in on East Prussia, we see the town of Hohenstein, which is where the Tannenberg Memorial was situated. During the war in the East, German soldiers heading to the front often were taken on a pilgrimage to the Tannenberg Memorial to gain a deeper understanding of the importance of their responsibility in bearing arms for the German nation. We are looking at footage from a soldier who was part of Nebelwerfer, or Rocket Launcher, Regiment 51. It was taken on June 5th of 1941, just before they moved into their designated position in Army Group Center to take part in the initial attack on the Soviet Union. Notice the Russian greys marked with Orthodox crosses that were left around the Tannenberg Memorial. This really was meant to be some kind of Germanic Valhalla shrine. If you'd like to see other videos about that unit, there's a link at the end of this video. Many of the collections of soldiers' private film footage from the Eastern Front start at the Tannenberg Memorial. This, for example, is from a soldier's collection who was part of a mobile hospital unit that operated in Russia in 1941. Thanks for watching.